Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about detailed evaluation in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am Dr. Suresh Padatmat, Officer of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to thank Professor Shobha Srinath. She is my teacher. She is the main architect of this clinical practice guideline for assessment of children and adolescent psychiatry. This has been published in Indian Journal of Psychiatry on 2019. This presentation is based on this guideline. At the same time, I would like to thank Dr. Rajendra K.M., Assistant Professor of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, Mimans, Bangalore, for his assistance and guidance in making this video. Let's discuss how we do detailed evaluation in child and adolescent psychiatry. First and the foremost, the child and adolescent psychiatry in young children and also the infant and toddlers may not have language capability to convey their feelings, thoughts and also their emotions what they are having. At the same time, it will be very difficult to get the information from the kids. Hence, you have to rely on information from the parents, friends, relatives, school teacher, tuition teacher and also if there is any other referral agency, you have to collect information from all possible sources. This is very essential in child and adolescent psychiatry. We need to collect information from mainly three domains, home, school and social situation. These are the places where children spend maximum time. Let's take the home. Most of the time, children express their behavior, thoughts, feeling in the home front. Hence, we need to interview parents. If possible, both parents should be involved. Sibs, brother and sister, grandparents, any significant caregivers who provide care for the child should be interviewed. Coming to the school, you need to get information how the child is performing in the school, whether the academic is increasing, decreasing, what is the attention and concentration, behavior in the school, interaction with the other kids and also how does he interact with the staff in the school. Please don't forget, sometimes children also will be going for tuition. Please do contact the tuition teacher whenever possible. That also will give you important information. And the last one is social situation, where the child goes for playing, interacting with friends, neighbors, relatives and many other people. At the same time, you also need to get information if the child has been referred from any agency, for example, child welfare committee or else police, that is juvenile police unit. So in such a scenario, collect information from those referring agency. But however, along with these three important domains, the fourth domain is coming up. That is social media. Nowadays, children and also adolescents are expressing their views, their feelings, their frustration. Many a time, death wishes are expressed on social media to their friends and to the strangers. And if you are able to get into access to the social media when they are expressing, you may be able to get a valuable information about their thoughts, emotions and feelings. But you need to balance between their confidentiality, security, at the same time, the best interest of the child. If the child is having problem, or in the best interest of the child, you need to get information on social media with whom, how, the child is behaving. Any time, cyberbullying itself can be the culprit. Hence, social media is a valuable information we should not forget to get the history. And also, apart from interviewing, you have to observe the child play. The child play is basically when the child comes to the clinic, from the moment it enters the clinic to the exit of the child going back home. Child spends time in the hospital or in the clinic. You need to observe the child. 
how it interacts with the parents. And also, you have to keep some toys. How does the child play with them? So, your observation should be non directed, unstructured. You need to observe for activity level, attention span, how long the child is able to play with the toys, ability to tolerate frustration. If the toy has been taken, or else, child is trying to construct certain creatively certain things using the toys. And if it doesn't happen, will it continue to hold the task? And also the concentration, the creativity level, looking for approval from the parents, use of colors, pens, papers, puzzles, and so forth. All these will give you valuable information regarding cognitive abilities, fine motor skills, sensory ability, coping with frustration, emotional responses, and rapport building. So, Using this play, you can also start talking to the child. That means you can engage the child in play and start asking questions or else related questions with regard to the play so that you can get information about the child's emotions, behavior and also thought process. At the same time, one more important issue is parent-child interaction. When the child is it the waiting all along with their parents? See how the child interacts with the parents. What is the seating arrangement? Whether the child is with the mother or with the father or with the grandparents or else with the sibs or else it is very indifferent. Look at the seating arrangements. Whether the child is comfortable with whom or else child is trying to explore the world but at the same time looking for reassurance from the mother and father. At the same time, how does parents respond, react to the child's behavior? So this parent-child interaction gives available information. And you should not forget to observe this. At the same time, you should know the limitation of the above methods. Child and adolescents may not open easily in the clinical setting, simply because new environment, hospital environment is intimidating to them. And many of them are strangers. Hence, they do not open up easily. Many a time, the child may be having biological needs, may be hungry, thirsty, or else would like to go to the toilet. Hence, you need to keep this in mind. Or else, illness itself, the child is severely depressed. The child may not open up. Or else, the child has schizophrenia. It's worried, or it is fearful, may not open up. Or else, severe anxiety, like anxiety disorders. The child may not open up. Or else developmental issues. The child has mental retardation. It may not understand your questions at all. So, the illness may itself also come in the way of communication. Collating information from multiple sources is very important in child adolescent psychiatry. And many a time, the information collected from various sources may be contradictory to each other. The father may give certain history. And the mother may give information which is completely contradictory to the father's information. This is because child behaves differently in different setting with the different people in a different way. For example, child may, be, child may be very talkative and active in the home front. But in the school, it is very shy, does not interact with anyone. Now, the parents will say, my child is normal and active. Whereas the school teacher will say, no, the child is very shy. Simple reason is because child behaves in a different environment differently. So you need to collect call information and the genuine difference of information do exist here. Serial observation is very important and serial mental status examination will be very helpful in reaching the correct diagnosis. And who all should do this detailed evaluation? UG undergraduates, postgraduates, psychiatrist, primary care doctors, nurses, psychologist, social workers. These are the people who have been trained should be able to do the detailed evaluation. Family members also should know about detailed evaluation. Simple reason is if they know about the detailed evaluation, what are the information the doctors are looking for diagnosis? They know about it, they will be able to help the doctor reaching the diagnosis. Le now, let's move into detailed evaluation. The objective of detailed evaluation 
is done either in the outpatient department or in the inpatient department. First and the foremost, we have to know whether the child has serious medical illness or else any organicity. You have to look for them. Does child require IP care? Whether the child has any safety issues? Is somebody abusing them physically or sexually? And detailed evaluation gives an opportunity for rapport building. To know for the temperamental history, environmental background and attachment issues. At the same time, you should never forget to look for protective factors and vulnerable factors. And also, what are the child interests, hobbies, skills and talents. Please do check for any past treatment details and response. To arrive at the diagnosis, this all information is very essential. And the plan for comprehensive management, that is assessments, investigation, medication and psychosocial management, this all information is very essential. Let's understand, there are 15 steps for detailed evaluation. Those are demographic details, that is basically identification data, chief complaints, family history, personal history, temperamental history, medical history, past history, history of presenting illness, negative history, general physical examination, psychiatric examination or mental status examination, tasks given to the child, summary, formulation, and diagnosis. These are the 15 different steps for detailed evaluation. Let's discuss each one of them. First, moving to demographic details or else identification data. Name, photo ID is very essential if you are going to do telemedicine in the future. So, having a photo ID, age of birth is very essential. Gender, schooling, occupation. In a time adolescents, because of the poverty, they have been they will be sent for to do certain work, maybe in the evening after the school. So, if possible, ask for any occupational work they are doing, socioeconomic status, address, and mobile number. Information gathering. Try to gather information from all possible sources. If you require, you may have, you may make a phone call to the respective informants, maybe grandparents. If the father is unable to come to a detailed evaluation, make a phone call to the father and ask certain information. Ask information from home, that is basically school, other social situation and social media, which I had told you. And also, know since when they know this child, relationship and duration of acquaintance if they are friends or else teacher. Please do check for the reliability and adequacy of the information. Reliable and adequacy is for the diagnosis purpose and management purpose. How do you know whether it is reliable and adequate? Whether the information provided is, there is clarity in the information, is credible source, whether the information is coherent, consistent across people and continuity. Consistent is if you ask the same person, today and also the same person tomorrow, he should be consistently giving the same history. That is what we are looking at consistency, adequate, accuracy and also appropriateness. There may be genuine different in the history from different people. That is the way child behaves in different situation. Now, after getting the demographic details, which we will move into chief complaints. Chief complaints is patient's version and parents own words. So, let's ask the patient, how can we help you? The child may not respond at all. Child says, I am completely alright. Ask the parents, what are the reasons they have brought the child? Avoid technical languages when documenting. Keep the chronological order of the complaints, duration. And also, please you should learn how to get the silent complaint points. Many a time, the parents will be worried about certain con certain issues or else they may be concerned about certain issues since many years. But however, that may not be the reason for consultation today. The father may say, I am worried about my child's academic performance. This is there since 10 years. But the reason for consultation is 
the school teacher had sent the referral telling that the child is behaving very rudely with others since past one month. Hence, the concerns are different, complaints are different. So you need to know the difference between concerns and complaints. Concerns are there since many years. Complaints are the reason for consultation. So you should know to differentiate between concerns and complaints. But worthwhile allowing the family members to express those concerns. And you should be able to delineate telling that these are concerns and these are complaints which made them to come to hospital for help seeking. At the same time, you should know in what domain the child's problems are. Whether it is in the behavioral domain or else emotional domain or else developmental domain. So, it is very easy to remember bed, B-E-D, bed, behavior, emotion, development. Behavior is basically ODD, deceptive behavior or else conduct disorder. Emotional is mood disorder, depression, anxiety disorder. Developmental is mental retardation, SLD, autism. These are whether which category they fall, roughly you should be able to make the guess. Coming to the family history, please do remember, here we are slightly deviating now, comparing to the adult workup. In here, immediately after the chief complaints, we move into family history. There is certain reason. As we know, Sir Shobha Srinath, clearly mentioned telling that as soon as we talk about chief complaints, tell the family members, let's discuss about the family issues and under what background these problems have arrived. I would like to know about the family. This gives an opportunity for the family members to tell about the family, what is the family and the environment of, of the family and tell them I will be coming back to this chief complaints shortly. Discuss about the family history. This gives an opportunity to know about the family, the background of the family, environmental condition of the child and also is there anything in the family condition which is producing these symptoms. Hence, the family history plays a crucial role here. So, immediately after the chief complaints, in demands, we take family history. Hence, we have to ask for family issues attachment issues, environmental background and during this family history you can build a rapport with the family. That's very essential. What are the things we have to do? You have to do three generation genogram, family history of any medical illness, family history of psychiatric illness, is there a consanguinity in marriage between the parents and type of family. Genogram you should know the symbols. Squares are represented for male and round or circle for females. Affected members will be shaded. Consanguinity union is will be mentioned by double line. The index patient will be shown by an arrow. Marriage by single line. Abortion and dead are mentioned. Moving to the three generation genogram. Here is a 12 year old female child having a problem. Hence, there is an arrow mark at the 12 year old child, his female child. She has an elder brother who is 14 years. Father and mother, they belong to second generation. And the third generation is grandparents. Maternal side and maternal side, you should ask for, is there any psychiatric illness, any medical illness, which may be playing a role in the child's upbringing. Imagine there is a person with a dementia at home and the parents are giving complete devoted time to the dementing patient. In such a scenario, the child will be neglected. And also, is there any genetic vulnerability for this child should be looked into it. And also, sometimes if the father is having alcohol dependent syndrome, that itself will put the child at risk of developing psychiatric problems. Hence, asking for psychiatric illness and medical illness in family history becomes very crucial. Moving further, ask for individual family members, background, education, occupation, health status. 
father, mother, sibs and other people. And also check, is there any primary caregiver who is taking care of the child? In affluent family, there may be babysitter. So you may have to talk to them also to get the information. Family history, you need to ask for living condition, parental relationship, father and mother, what is their relationship, is there, is there a marital discord, parent-child relationship, sibling-child relationship, child-rearing practices, leadership and decision-making within the family, what is the communication style in the family, and family members' attitude towards the patient and also towards the symptoms of the child. Family stressor, discord, and typical day in a family needs to be told. At the same time, you need to also look for parent child interaction. Whether the interaction is responsive, sensitive, consistent, or else supervision is adequate, inadequate, complete neglect is there that need to be documented. Is there any significant other parental figures? Maybe grandparents? or else babysitter or else uncle, aunt may be there. Parenting style, whether it is authoritative or authoritarian or permissive or uninvolved parents. So those need to be checked. Response, disciplining pattern across the family members. Whether these kinds of disciplining pattern is consistent, inconsistent, reinforcement, punishment and also comparison a child with others is there or not has to be checked. Family atmosphere has to be also be known. And also at the same time, before you finish the family history, please ask for family's notion about the child's problem. What is their understanding why the child is having symptoms? Illness, cause, treatment expectation, and family resources to provide care. In such a scenario, by knowing all these things, you can do psychoeducation and also overall impressions of the child's family life and relationship with family members. Whether there is a requirement of any intervention need to be noted. If there is any high expressed emotion or accommodation for child's pathological behavior needs to be noted. After family history, move into personal history. Personal history is birth and early development. Ask for prenatal factors, whether the, whether the pregnancy was planned, whether mother had a good antenatal checkup, vaccination, was the care of mother was good or not. At the same time, whether the mother had any hypertension, eclampsia, preeclampsia, immunization, whether the mother had any illness during the pregnancy. Next. Once you got this information, move into perinatal factors. That is, during birth, was it a normal delivery? Or else, whether is it a cesarean or forceps delivery? Was there any complication during the delivery? Did the child had any distress like cord around the neck? Or else, the child did not cry immediately after the birth? Was there need of pediatrician intervention? Or else the child required incubator. Those are the information you need to ask for perinatal factors. After that, you also need to ask for whether there was any cyanosis, jaundice, seizure, or need for resuscitation, or else weight of the child, of car score, if they are able to remember, it's, or else they are able to give those information, it's excellent. From there, you may need to move immediately into the postnatal history, usually four weeks from the birth and later, whether the child had any complications, infection or else any other problems. Also ask for any immunization if the child has been done or not. After these, you have to move into milestones. Milestones are very essential to know about the developmental disorders. So there are four important milestones you should need to ask. What are milestones? Cognitive milestones, social milestones, speech and language. At the same time, current level of development also need to be noted. Please do remember, it's sometimes in a busy OPD you may not remember. Or else, if a junior resident or a senior resident is doing, 
I do not remember having a chart within the workup pro forma makes things very easier. Many a time when you ask the family about the milestone, the father or mother may not remember exactly whether it is three months or four months. It is best to ask if you compare with your elder child whether the present child had any problem with regard to walking, talking, pulse, pilot training. Mother will be able to easily tell that the child, the index patient, have a delay in walking, delay in talking, delay in learning. The mother may easily pick up and say, compared to the elder child, second child is slow in all activities. So those kind of informations becomes valuable. Many a time you may not get information from the father. You may have to rely on the mother. If you don't get any milestone history from the father, you may have to request the mother to come or else interview the mother for telemedicine. Further, you should also ask for mother's estimation of the mental age of the child so that you can roughly know the IQ of the child. Developmental course, you need to ask, know whether it is age appropriate with regard to milestone or else gross delay in birth, mild delay in birth, only specific focal delay is there. Is there any regression in the milestones? The child had started speaking but suddenly regressed because of infection or else epilepsy. That need to be noted. Whether the regression is in the background of certain organic insult to the brain. And you need to interpret milestone is age appropriate, delayed, focal delay or global delay need to be clearly mentioned in the milestone. Milestones will give you clear indication whether child has developmental disorder and how to go about rehabilitation. At the same time, you should know to ask about the self-help skills of the child. The current level of functioning regarding the toilet training, whether the child is a, has become independent, brushing, independently whether the child can do it or not, bathing, washing after the toilet, dressing, eating. So know whether the child has achieved his self-help skills. Sometimes you may not you may also ask for the cognitive skills of recognizing rupees, the time. Addition, calculation can be checked here. But self-help skills moves around the toilet, brushing, bathing, dressing and eating. <laughs> Schooling history. Schooling history because majority of our children spend 7 to 8 hours in the school. So you should ask for schooling information age at starting of the schooling. Is there any difficulty in academics? Is there any problem in the behavior during the school? Frequent somatic complaints? School, whether the stream and environment is good? If there is a change in the school, how did the child was able to cope with the change from one school to another school? That is change in the environment, whether the child was able to adapt or decompensate it. That need to be noted here. Whether the child had separation anxiety, school refusal, was there any truancy, refusing to go to the school, academic performance, those need to be clearly documented in the schooling history. At the same time, look for parental expectation and how much pressure the parents are putting on the child. At the same time, parental impression about the academic ability non-academic non -academic ability of the child, social ability and conduct of the child. That needs to be checked. Teacher's impression on the child with regard to attention, concentration, reading, academic performance, social skills, interacting with friends, frustration tolerance need to be noted and asked from the teacher. Absenteeism from school, any reasons or any specific reasons need to be noted. How the child is having extracurricular activities, sports, hobbies, whether the child has fear of exams, performance, 
poor motivation in academics. Difficulty with reading, spelling, arithmetic need to be noted. Negative experience in the school, especially punishment from the teacher or abuse by the friends. That is basically bullying. And at the same time, please do note about any cyberbullying is there or not. With this personal history, move to menstrual and sexual history. Sexual history becomes very important only in adolescent. Hence, if relevant, then only ask about sexual history. Don't ask about sexual history in younger children. So, this menstrual and sexual history, if relevant, only to be asked. Otherwise, you can skip this. If the child is an, if the if if the client is an adolescent, ask for opportunity for sex education from the parents or not. Body image concerns about the adolescent, whether the child, whether the adolescent has any kind of body image disturbance need to be noted here. Menstrual history, especially in the females, age at menarche, last menstrual cycle to be noted. At the same time, reaction of the child regarding the adolescent change in the body need to be asked. Premenstrual dysphoric symptoms, that is PMS need to be checked. Premenstrual syndrome is there or not. Any alleged history of abuse, especially sexual abuse or substance abuse also need to be recorded. From this, we move into temperamental history. Temperamental history refers to pattern of emotional, behavioral reactivity to environmental situation and capacity for self-regulation of emotions. So, this is basically how the child emotionally and behaviorally react to the environment and how does it regulates its emotion in the environment that is called as temperamental history it is almost equivalent to personality history in the adult workup now coming back to the child and adolescent workup temperamental history has important eight criteria attention and concentration activity level Adaptability to the environment, impulsivity, rhythmicity, approach to withdrawal from novel stimuli, intensity of reaction, threshold for responsiveness, and quality of mood. These are the various domains you need to assess for temperamental history. I am going to make a separate video how to assess each of these domains. So please subscribe to my channel, hit this temperamental history video at the same time you need to note on increased activity or level or not yes or no you have to comment this is how you are going to make the impression attention concentration sustained or not socially or friendly that has to be yes or no sensitivity and easy to cry yes or no very moody or not long term feel of ease with new settings or new person yes or no Shy, fearful, anxious of certain places, yes or no. Stubborn, excessive temper tantrum, destructiveness, yes or no. Passive, obedient or complacent, yes or no. Hobbies, interest, talent, strengths, you need to mention that. Overall, you have to comment on easy, slow or warm, difficult child. After the temperamental, you need to ask for attachment, attachment pattern. See, attachment theory is one of the important theory and it plays a crucial role in the child's development. What is this attachment pattern? Attachment is nothing but preferred adult to, to seek comfort when the child is in distress, whether it is mother, father, grandmother or others. Response to comfort, whether it is good or poor, that means child continues to be distressed in spite of giving comfort. Emotional regulation, willingness to go with the stranger, excessive clinging, vigilance, present or absent, overall impression whether the child is secure, insecure, anxious, resistant, avoidant, disorganized. That you need to make maintain, make a note of this. And there is a new video will be made with regard to attachment pattern also. Coming to the medical history, medical history you do check for whether the child has any medical illness chronic medical conditions, any problems in feeding, recurrent infection, epilepsy and also 
check whether the child had any encephalitis or meningitis and also any medication intake need to be noted here. Coming to the past history, whether the child has any past history of psychiatric illness, number of episodes, treatment taken, response to treatment, any side effects, duration of treatment and psychosocial intervention was done or not need to be noted here. If you are telling that there is a past history and there are multiple episodes, then you should know the difference between the intermediate period between the two episodes or inter-episodic inter period, at least two months should be there to call it as a new episode. Otherwise, it will be a same episode. Means between one episode to another episode, if there is a two months of period where the child becomes completely all right, then it will be considered as a new episode. Coming to the here, how you are going to present is the, the newer, the, the present history and the rest of them will be put in the past history. Coming to the history of presenting illness. After you discussing all those things, now come back to the chief complaints. Now you discuss when was the onset. Onset of symptoms. The onset is for the consultation, the reason for consultation of which is the symptom. Ask how did it start? If you take on x-axis the duration, on y-axis the severity, if you look at the chart, the symptoms is increasing. The time duration taken for onset of symptoms to a diagnosable condition, the duration is called as onset. Let me repeat you. Basically, from the onset of symptoms, the time taken to become a diagnosable condition that is onset because this onset is very essential because it has a prognostic indicator in this if it is abrupt onset within less than two days has excellent prognosis acute onset with two weeks has a good prognosis subacute two weeks to one month is the onset we guard at prognosis insidious onset has a poor prognosis so onset has a very good indicator for prognosis of the case. Course, you need to know how the course of this illness in this child. Again, x-axis duration, y-axis severity. If the symptoms are moving like this, then if it is one episode or the other episode, the first one is episodic. If the illness is continuous, it is called as chronic. Chronic with fluctuating course also, these are the three important course you need to document. Moving to the precipitating factor. Is there any temporal correlation between the onset of symptom and any stressors? Document what is the stressor. Document the triggering event. Coming to the history of presenting illness, start with the chronological order of the chief complaints. Describe each symptoms. And these symptoms, whether is it in the home domain, school domain or in the social domain. Quantify and qualify each symptom. Basically, understand the symptom domains from developmental, emotional, behavioral and stress related. So, all these domains need to be checked. For each symptom, as for duration, context whether it is the home, school or in the social situation, frequency, Increasing factor, decreasing factor, progression of the symptoms. In the past one month, it is increasing or decreasing. Outcome of the symptoms. Whether the parents become complacent and they listen to the child so that the child's symptoms decreases. Also note, is there any maintaining factor for these symptoms? Let's give an example. If the child in the past one month or in the past three months, it has crying spells. Since past three months, if the child has crying spells, is it in the home context, school, social situation or even in the social media, child is continuously crying in front of the computer, frequency, how often it occurs, in a day two or three times or multiple times in a day, is there any precipitating factor or else, what are the factors which increases this crying spells, decreasing factor. In the past one month, these crying spells have increased or decreased. 
associated symptoms of feeling sad irritability need to be noted so the whole quantifying and qualifying each symptom is very essential the symptom sometimes may be discrete only one like for example child did not do homework because the teacher threatened the child the child started crying that is in the school front only once so discrete or one episode if the family is able to tell you should not give much weightage unless because of that incident the child has multiple times frequently also it has impact on various areas of the functioning of the child inquire about the essentials that is basically ask whether the child is harmful to self like cutting death wishes or the adolescent is telling i would like to commit suicide or else if the adolescent is planning to harm someone else or the child who had good self help skills has become regressive in nature because of the some infection unable to take care of himself in the recent past and sometimes you may need to ask the adolescent directly about this symptoms don't be afraid the research have clearly documented that asking an adolescent do you feel suicidal that wishes is an opportunity for intervention and research clearly has said that you are not inducing this is a window of opportunity for ask and to do the intervention these do ask for the impact on the associated function because of these symptoms how the biological functions are there the child has irritability or crying spells because of those symptoms how much it is impacting the sleep appetite especially if it is an adolescent ask for libido hygiene all bladder habit does the symptoms have impact on biological function or its social functioning because of crying spells or irritability the child's academic performance is deteriorating that need to be documented social functioning how the child as is it become withdrawn excessively social casual those social functioning needs to be documented after check whether the child is using internet or mobile too much this may be because of two reasons because of depression the child want to escape escape from the uh, real world or else because of the school's excessive demand of performance beyond the child's capacity to escape child is watching youtube videos or playing games that is escapism or else Novelty seeking. The child has becoming dependent on the internet. That is addiction. If it is there or not, you should be able to differentiate. Explain a typical day of the child. Um, the child when it awakes and in the night time till it goes to sleep. Explain a typical day how it spends time. Check for any legal conflict with the child. That is basically child in conflict with law. or any financial issues with the parents so that the, the care of the child comes because if you are giving a costly medication or a psychosocial therapy which is very costly you need to know the socio economic condition of the parents at the same time you need to do life charting if there are multiple episodes so that in the next time when the patient comes by looking at the life chart you will be able to go through the whole history by looking at this one simple page now going to the negative history check for any organicity like fever head injury vomiting seizures any chronic illness medication intake need to be asked whether there is substance use especially solvent abuse experimental or dependence or an abuse with the friends need to be checked any psychotic symptoms are there or not you have to mention there are no psychotic symptoms mood and that mood and anxiety symptoms if there are or not is to be checked in negative history moving to the general physical examination please do check for vital height weight lymph nodes thyroid rs cvs per abdomen cns look for ask for vision problem hearing problem identity mark has to be taken and look for minor physical anomalies if you are suspecting any developmental disorder at the same time height and weight calculating bmi is very essential 
and abuse signs need to be checked whether the child has multiple scars on the body needs to be checked and verified why the child is having that sometimes in a rare phenom conditions we may have to do genital examination with regard to certain genetical disorders like prader willi syndrome or kleinfelter syndrome if there are those genetic disorders are there you may have to do genital examination you can do this examination only if the parents have given the consent if the adolescent gives the consent in the presence of the parents and a third neutral person if it is a child then you may have to have a nurse and if it is a female child a female doctor has to do the general physical examination please don't do physical examination without the consent without the presence of the family member without the presence of a third neutral person during the general physical examination if the child or the adolescent refuses to give consent don't force yourself doing general physical examination please do remember this general physical examination is essential but don't do against the wish and will of the child or the adolescent with consent explaining the child then only do general physical examination moving to the mental status examination or also called as psychiatric examination here yeah. please do remember the mental status examination depends upon various factors such as one is the msc doesn't mean that only interview period starts from the child entering to the clinic till the child leaves the clinic if it is inpatient it covers approximately one month to uncover the psychopathology serial mental status examination is very important the msc done by the psychiatrist should be age appropriate cognitively appropriate to the child and your questions should be simple if it is a younger child or a toddler you should not do msc if the child is very small msc becomes very easy if the child is above 7 years and it becomes like an adult if the child is an adolescent the absence of any developmental disorders At the same time, you also have to make behavioral observation of the child and adolescent. You also check for thought and perceptual abnormalities. So these simple principle you should keep in mind. Very important is MAC should be tailored to the cognitive ability of the child. If the child is very small and the cognitive ability is very less, you should not ask complex question. It is becomes useless. Interstate examination. there are eight important variables you need to examine general appearance and behavior psychomotor activity speech thought mood perception other phenomena and cognitive functions these are the eight important domains you have to check for in mental status examination this should be checked thoroughly especially in adolescent in adult in young children you have to be cognitive tailor the msc depending upon the cognitive ability of the child or the development of the child in the mental status examination if you are doing general appearance and behavior what is the behavior you are noted in the child during the waiting period whether the child is hyperactive impulsive temper tantrum temper temper tantrums crying self injurious behavior stereotypes self absorbed play whether separation from the child whether the child is winging whilst the child is exploring the world tension and concentration eye contact social engagement ability to engage with the child receptive and expressive language of the child other relevant observation like dissociative spells those are the things you have to check for and also any abnormal behavior normal motor movements needs to be documented such as tics mannerism tears stereotypes catatonic signs and other perseveration need to be documented psychomotor activity whether there is increase in the psychomotor activity that is basically goal directed activities more or not agitation how is the hand gesture body gesture during the conversation whether there is an hyperactivity need to be noted coming to the speech 
tone, tempo, reaction time, volume, prosody, prosody and reaction time needs to be checked. Thought assessment. Take a good speech sample. Look for any predominant theme. Child versions of the problem. To subtle thoughts, ideas. And at the same time, comment on the speech sample with regard to form, stream, position of thought and content of thought. Once the thought assessment is done, go into the mode. What is the mood of the child and the adolescent? Whether it is subjective and objective, congruent, appropriate or not, range reactivity need to be commented. But however, in the young child, assessment of mood will be very difficult. In adolescent, it will be fairly easy to do it. Perception, check for any hallucination, pseudo hallucination and illusions. But however, please do remember, sometimes young children may have fantasies. So, you need to delineate between those fantasies, images with the hallucination. Other phenomena like depersonalization, derealization, they are there, need to be documented here. Coming to the cognitive function, check for the consciousness of the child, whether the child is oriented to person, whether father, mother, it is able to identify, sometimes to place, in some with regard to time, grossly they will be able to tell it is morning, afternoon or evening. Attention concentration can also be checked. Whether the child is able to sit in the interview, how well it is able to recall the yesterday's event, day morning, breakfast, how did they come to the hospital, those can be checked in the memory. Intelligence can be checked with the general fund of information. Also, Simple arithmetic and calculation can be given. Judgment is basically by giving hypothetical situation, you can check for the judgment. Insight, the child, when child and adolescent may have a complete loss of insight, telling that I don't have any problem, or else they may acknowledge, yes, I have some problems because of my dad. So that means they are aware they have a problem, but they are attributing to the parents. Whether they are Accepting for treatment is the question, so it will be considered as partial insight. The child says, yes, I have some problem and I am ready to take treatment and be considered as complete insight is present. That is basically, it, it depends upon the cognitive ability of the child and also whether the child knows there are some problems which needs empty. Coming to the task given to the child, for example, during the whole process, Child needs to be engaged. You can give certain copying figures, drawings, asking the child to write or draw something, draw a person test, arithmetics, calculation. And also, you can document play assessment here. At the same time, never forget to ask for three wish test. Three wish test is a window test to know the emotional condition of the child. So, it is an opportunity to peek into the condition of the cognitions of the child. This test to be asked, you have to directly ask the child if you have been granted with the three wish, any three wish in the whole world, what would you ask for it? What would be? If the child knows about the concept of God, you can ask if the God comes and gives you three wish. What are the three wish you will ask from the God? So that will give the child's inadequacies what they are at asking. The child may say, dad and mom are fighting. I want them to stop fighting. Or else it may say, the dad needs to love me more. So those kind of things may come up in this three wish test. Coming to the last part, summary. Summary is nothing but the complete summarization of this whole case in the same manner but only the significant salient points will be mentioned here. The summary is done so that any person who reads the summary should get a fair idea of what is the case and what is the patient's problem and how they have arrived for a diagnosis. Formulation. Formulation is basically giving the silent points in favor of the diagnosis and if there are any points against, it also should be mentioned. Here, 
the doctor will use his analytical skills to come to a diagnosis. At the same time, significant MSA findings, cognitive function, and also the reason for choosing certain treatment and how the management and rehabilitation is planned will come completely in the formulation. Please remember, formulation, in formulation, doctor need to use his analytical skills for the planning, the management, that is rehabilitation, medication and psychosocial treatment. At the same time, please do remember, in the formulation, the doctor need to write about the investigation, point in favor of the diagnosis, against the diagnosis, there are any differential diagnosis, prognostic factors need to be indicated. The last is the diagnosis. Here in child psychiatry, the multi-axial diagnosis is very important. Access 1 is the primary disorder. Access 2 is developmental disorder. Access 3 is intellectual functioning. Access 4 is medical problem. And access 5 is psychosocial issues. These five important axial diagnoses to be done so that the management can be comprehensive and also multimodal in approach for the management. Sometimes diagnosis, you are able to get a good information, multiple settings you are there and come to a confirmatory diagnosis or else if you have a doubt, you can keep a differential diagnosis. If there are some information is yet to come or investigation is yet to come with regard to ruling out certain organic condition and provisional diagnosis can be kept. So these are the 15 different points you have to look for in a detailed evaluation. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.